YouTubers. I have with me the Pentax 645Z. This is a 51 megapixel medium format camera. And we have today Shari. She just flew in from Los Angeles and she grew up on Guam, uh, but she's here just for vacation and she's helping me with this photo shoot. Where did she get deported from? Shari, you have anything uh, to say about yourself? Um, hi everyone, I'm Shari. I don't know if you guys recognize me. We did shoot um, back in Last San summer, you know? yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's good to be back home. I'm excited to shoot with James once again. And right now, or well this time, we're a little bit more prepared, so hopefully. Yes, not like the hour we had last time fighting against the sun. Yeah. We have at least two hours or two and a half hours. And we didn't have help. Yes, true. It was just us two. Yeah. And um, I'll put your Instagram uh, yeah. on screen maybe here. Yeah. and even in the description below so in case any other photographers in the los angeles area or bay area wants to work with you they can contact you you can add me on snapchat too at miss la sherry mm -hmm. all right <laughs> okay we'll continue shooting okay. This camera has 51 megapixels, which is a lot. It is about 1.7 times uh, greater sensor size than full frame. Actual medium format sensor is about 45 millimeters by 60 millimeters, um, but this is kind of like a medium format crop where it's a 36 millimeter by 24 millimeter sensor size uh, in here. It could do ISO from 100 all the way up to 204,000. Um, the highest shutter speed in this is only one four thousandth of a second. And this was actually released a while ago, um, actually exactly three years ago, uh, in June uh, 2014. Uh, but overall, um, there's only one other camera that could come close with uh, the 51 megapixels, and that's the uh, Canon 5D SR. And I'm not too sure any other camera in the market except for the Phase 1 IQ250 and the uh, Hasselblad equivalent. I think that's a part of the 5D series. But great internal specs for this camera. Some good physical features about this camera is it's dustproof, uh, weather resistance uh, construction. I love the deep hand grip. Uh, this does look like a large camera, but with the deep hand grip, it makes it feel very comfortable. It has a 0.78 optical viewfinder. It is the same as A7R2's uh, EVF, um, but this actually makes me prefer looking through an optical viewfinder. The screen is tiltable, uh, 3.2 inch, over a million dots, uh, over a million dots LCD, very clear. Uh, you can get those high shots as well as uh, low shots with this uh, camera. Overall, just a great feel, and um, I forget about how big the camera is um, by just holding it. Okay, as you can see, it's raining behind me. We have to stop shooting uh, kind of early. Uh, the lens I was using is a Pentax SMC 75mm 2.8. In full frame equivalent terms, is about a 60mm. Uh, people usually convert the um, aperture, but hey, 2.8 lens is a 2.8 lens as in regards to letting the light in. Maybe full frame equivalent, as you say, for depth of field, maybe a 2.2 or 2.0. Uh, this lens has six elements and five groups. This is also considered like Pentax's kit lens. Uh, I know this, film, this lens is very old from the film era, but it's still a very sharp lens at 2.8 wide open. I'm going to go home now before the rain gets even worse 
and check out the files on the computer. Um, I am going to convert to EXIF uh, to be recognized as the Phase 1 IQ250 files, so it can be read by uh, Capture One. All right, we got to go. It's, it's raining hard. All right, I'm home now. I want to check out the 645Z raw files. Okay, I want to show you three examples of the 645Z raw files. And a lot of people do not know how to import Capture One, uh, import the raw files from the 645Z into Capture One because it is not readable, but I'm going to uh, show you a way. So first example is Shari on the grass area here. This has not been edited, just imported into Lightroom. And the profile is Adobe Standard. Now I'm, I'm going to try to put side by side, Lightroom on the left, Capture One on the right hand side. The same photo, look at that. Lightroom raw convert is very flat. Some people do like it like that. Capture one. Let me just reset the exposure. Everything. Let me reset the highlights. There we go. Everything has been set to default. Nothing has been touched. So when you import into Capture One, Capture One gives a nice vibrant uh, color for uh, the grass area. Her skin tones are very nice. And I would rather have a starting point uh, like in Capture One, where I can do little tweaking uh, to the files. And the 645Z files have a lot of dynamic range, about 15 stops. Highlight, you can drag it all the way to the right, bring it back to background. Shadows, easily, very easily you can bring back shadows. Brightness, even exposure. Someone did a, like a, sh a shot in, in the dark and was able to bring it up five stops in. Uh, no problem with that. And the files in Capture One and also Lightroom, they're very sharp. Let me show you an example. You can count every eyelash in Shari's uh, lashes here. And you have the same effect with um, Lightroom, lower down highlights, you can bring back the background. Okay, next example, uh, I'm going to use the uh, green area here. You can tell it's very flat. And to me, I don't want to spend so much time on the computer working on the files. Yeah, th this is going to take a lot of work versus in Capture One. I did some adjustments earlier. Let me reset, reset that. So, you know, versus looking at this, nice colors. Skin tones are good, right? I believe the file on the left is adjusted. Yeah. Okay, not adjusted. All right, both the same. Again, high dynamic range. Bring back the sky. Increase brightness a little bit. Maybe a little bit of shadow. And I, I mean, if you're fine with the color like this, and the picture's good to go. Okay. I was doing some adjustments earlier. Okay, everything has been reset. Let's look at the uh, third example. Okay, flat. Can okay, I mute it? Very vibrant. Loving the colors here with the capture one. Again, bring back the highlight. Shadows you can increase, the brightness, loving these files. Look how sharp it is, very sharp. This is bringing 100%, 200%, very nice. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to change the raw files in Pentax. What I did is, this is the SD card here. And if you try to import in Capture One, um, looking at the SD card, it's not going to recognize the, the raw files. You have to change the camera model. I'm going to show you how to do that. So SD card here, you would highlight all your files. Then you would copy it to a folder. And I have done that already to save time. So folder Shari photo shoot. You can see all the files are here. 
and the program I'm going to use is called Analog Exif. Exif. I can put a link in the description below where I got the program from, and this is for Mac. I'm not too sure about Windows. So I already selected the folder on your desktop. Show you photo shoot. I'm gonna select the first file. And camera manufacturer, you just double click on that, change it to phase one, phase space one, press enter. Camera model, I'm going to change it to IQ 250. And the IQ 250 uses the same Sony 51 megapixel sensor as the 645Z, press enter. Important is to click save. Okay, so this file is phase one IQ 250. This one and the rest of the files are all 645Z, and it's about 144 pictures here. So how do you change everything at one time? Highlight the next file, hold down shift key, left click, all the way down. So everything is highlighted. Right click on it, copy metadata. And we're gonna tell analog exif to copy from, click all files, so it'll be selectable, from the first one. The first file that we change and there's a backup so you click open and you only want to copy the camera manufacturer phase one camera model model iq250 so we're gonna kind of trick capture one into thinking that all these files are from phase one model camera model iq250 on check mark everything else you only want to copy the camera manufacturer and the camera model okay and you press ok and it's going to take a while because you have like 144 photos. Should take you maybe a couple minutes, but we're going to sit here and then I'm going to fast forward the video. All right, we're almost done here. A couple more files. And you'll notice everything has been changed. You can close that. And we're going to go into Capture One. Let's see if it recognizes the files. Import. This is still reading from the SD card. We're going to choose the folder on our desktop. Share your photo shoot. Click open. And there you have it. You can select all the files you want to import. I have it already here in my uh, library. And just looking at all the, these are all files that haven't been uh, touched. Just importing them, very nice. And good thing about uh, the good thing about the 645Z files is you can easily um, bring back the highlights from her skin and her wardrobe very easily. Nothing's uh, lost. A lot of detail in the files. Highlights, even shadows too. Very good. Really loving this uh, this system. So if uh, you're in a market for a medium format uh, digital uh, system, Pentax is very affordable. This, is, uh, this system is one of the most affordable systems uh, as it regards to lenses. Lenses for other medium format systems like the Leica S, Hasselblad, uh, Mamiya, they're, sometimes they can get very expensive, but uh, from what I've been seeing, you can get a lot of uh, 645Z uh, lenses, even from the film eras, the 645 autofocus lenses for underneath a thousand dollars. And this kit lens is it's very sharp, as uh, shown before in this video. Really great lens. You can really gr get really awesome uh, quality photos from this um, system. The 645Z use sells for about. Five thousand two hundred dollars. I've been seeing on the used forums and uh, eBay, so that's that's pretty good. It's a pretty good price compared to the um, GFX, of course, because it's a mirrorless uh, medium format, and the Hasselblad uh, X1D. Um, this is the best system to get into um, if you're on a budget. I know five thousand dollars is a lot, but if you sell the camera gear and you get into it, um, these files are amazing. A lot of dynamic range. You'll save you time in the computer and post processing. And overall, just give you a really um, awesome look for your photos. 51 megapixels holds a lot of detail. And from what I've been seeing, there is a medium format feel from using the camera for about two weeks. All right, thanks for uh, checking out this video. Please subscribe if you haven't to, and hit the like button.